Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 1 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for this video, you're already going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch installed on your Xbox. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although I will be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below. It's super easy to do. Once that's done, you can come back here and then I'm going to be showing you specifically how to play PS1 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X and we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. This is what we had to use to install RetroArch previously, but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play PlayStation 1 games. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. So for us to bring our BIOS file to RetroArch, it is technically possible to do it from the web portal. However, I've always had a lot of issues with that, so I would recommend doing it through a file browser instead. So what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our BIOS files via the USB over to our Xbox directly. So what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a file explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox dev portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done, we're going to be coming back to our Xbox dev portal. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here. We're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file.app.x that we just downloaded previously. Click open, select your file, select next, then select start and then your file will start to install. Now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your Xbox and just like that the file should be installed. So before we extract our hard drive and bring it over to our Xbox, I'm first going to be talking about games so we can get that process out of the way. So what I have right here is a folder with my Tekken 3 game. Now I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you how to download any games. It is really easy to find a quick Google search will help you out. Or you can feel free to create a backup or dump of your existing PlayStation 1 games, which will help put you in the right direction so you can create ROM files for your games. Now if you do download your games, they will most likely come in a .7z file like I have right here, or a .rar format. If this is the case, you will need to install or 7-zip to extract your games. Now currently I have 7-zip installed although the process is very similar for WinRare although I'll be leaving both of those applications linked in the description down below. To extract our game what we need to do is right click here. We're simply going to be clicking extract here and then our game will start to extract. Now when you extract your PlayStation 1 games there's a few possible formats they can come in. One is a .bin and a .q file. As you can see, I currently have .bin and a .q file for my Tekken, or it can come in a .iso file, which is a disk image file. Now, thankfully in RetroArch, either of these will work just fine. So in today's video, I'm gonna be using a .q and a .bin file. However, a .iso file should also work without any issues. So from this point, what we're actually gonna be bringing over to our Xbox is a PlayStation 1 BIOS file. Now I will mention in today's video, I'm not gonna be sharing any download links or sharing anything like this. Although they are really easy to find, a quick Google search will help you out or you can feel free to dump your existing PlayStation 1 BIOS. Again, I won't be showing you that in today's video. However, I'll be leaving some links in the description down below that will help you do that. And once you have your BIOS, you will need to rename it exactly like this. So it needs to be named SCPH5501.bin. This is super important for other applications and for other emulators, it can be named a little bit different. However, for the BIOS file in RetroArch, it needs to be named SCPH5501.bin. That's super important. Now from this point, once your external drive has your BIOS and your game on it, what we're gonna be doing is taking it out of our PC, we're going to be plugging it into our Xbox, and then we're going to be continuing from over there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. From this point, I'm simply going to be starting from my dev mode. So once that's done, what we're going to be doing is coming down to the games and apps section right here, and we're going to be loading up the My Files Explorer. So once this opens up, we will have two options here. We will have removable storage devices and isolated storage. So removable storage devices in this case is going to be any USB drives or anything you've connected. So we're going to be going here first. So you can do this by using your left thumbstick to hover over this, and we're simply going to be clicking the A button to go further in here. We're then going to have to locate to where our BIOS file is. So for me, it's in my BIOS files and ROMs section. It's in my Xbox, it's in BIOS, and it's in PlayStation 1. And right here, I have my BIOS file SCPH5001. So what we're going to be doing from this point is copying this BIOS file. To do this again, hover over on top of it, click the start button, and we're simply going to be clicking copy file. Again, click the A button on this, and now our file is copied. 
we're then going to be going to the isolated storage on our Xbox. So once you click this open, nothing will show up here. As right now we're inside the My File Explorer application. This is no problem. What we need to do from this point is just go one step higher. We're going to be going to the packages, click A on this, and then our packages will load up. From this point, we're going to locate to our RetroArch folder. So for me, it's actually at the very top option here. It should start with 1E4C. What we need to do is locate to this, click the A button again, and now we'll be inside our Xbox folder. From this point, what we're going to be doing is coming to the local state option right here. We're then going to be scrolling down until we see system. You can scroll down using your right thumbstick by clicking up and down. It will scroll here. We're going to be clicking on system. And here is where we're going to be pasting our BIOS file that we just copied. To do this again, we're going to be clicking the start button. We're going to be clicking paste and it will take a second or two. And then our PlayStation 1 BIOS file is now pasted inside our RetroArch folder. From this point, we're done. Our BIOS file is now inside of our Xbox. To get back out of here, we're simply going to be clicking our Xbox home button. We're going to be going home and we're going to be brought back to our dev mode UI. From this point, we can simply click down and we can open up RetroArch. And this will take a second or two before RetroArch will boot up. Once RetroArch is open, we should be brought to the main menu right here. What we're going to be doing is clicking on the load core option here at the very top. And we're going to be scrolling down until we see Sony PlayStation. So once we get down to Sony PlayStation here, we will have a couple of different cores to choose from. We have Beetle PSX hardware, we have Beetle PSX, Duck Station, and PCSX rearmed. For today's video, I'm going to be using Beetle PSX hardware. Although if you want to experiment with the other cores, feel free here. However, Beetle PSX seems to give good performance on the Xbox. So I'm simply going to be clicking A here. And you'll see on the bottom left, our core has now been fully loaded. From this point, we're going to be going down one. We're going to be clicking on the load content option. And then we're going to be locating to where our games are currently downloaded. So for me, they're currently in my F drive. However, my hard drive is currently partitioned, so it can either be in your E or your F drive, depending on how you set it up. So for me, it's in my F drive, my Xbox folder, ROMs, PlayStation 1. And here we're going to be either looking for our .q file, if you have a .q and a .bin game. Otherwise, you're going to be looking for the .iso format game. Simply select it. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read this file type, you'll have to select your core again. However, the current core you have loaded will show up at the very top here. As you can see, for me, it's currently set up as Beetle PSX. Simply click A and then our game will start to load. So you may have to be a little bit patient here while this loads up. And then eventually you will get this beautiful PlayStation 1 loading screen and a sound that takes me straight back to my childhood. Now, as mentioned, the performance on the few games that I've tested was actually really, really good with this. PlayStation 1 emulators have been around for a while and they perform really well overall. However, this is really, really cool to see PlayStation 1 running on an Xbox Series S or X and it works really, really well. Now, from this point, if you want to open up your menu, you can click your combination. For me, it's down and select and it'll be able to open up and see all of our RetroArch menu right here. Now, if we come down a little bit further, we should see this options menu and this is going to be core specific options for our emulator. If we click this open, and here we can have a bunch of different things that we can play around with. So for me, I'd actually recommend leaving most of these things by default. However, if you want to experiment with anything here, you can. A couple things I'd recommend taking a look at would be the internal GPU resolution. It's not something I've played around with too much and it's 1x by default. However, you can come in here and scale up the resolution, which should be fine for some games. As mentioned, it's not something I've played around with, but I believe 2 to 4x will probably work just fine on an Xbox Series S or X. This, of course, will depend on the game. You can skip the BIOS if you want. And then there's a couple of other things in here you can play around with. As as mentioned, I didn't have any issues, so I'm not going to be looking too much into this, but you can feel free to experiment and play around with it if you'd like. Now, the last thing I would recommend doing is creating a game playlist. As you can see, I currently have one right here for the SNES. It's super easy to do, and it'll basically concatenate and group all of your games. And what's really cool about this is you can automatically attach assignments to them. So you can automatically attach a core. You can really nicely list everything, as you can see I have right now for this console. You also get the little icons for the cartridges or discs. So it's something I would definitely recommend doing. What I'll be doing is leaving a card on screen and a link in the description down below to my previous video where I show you how to set that up. It's definitely something I'd recommend doing if you're going to be playing a lot of PlayStation games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play PlayStation 1 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time as always, keep it saucy. Peace.